I'm David Farrell, University Archivist, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to what I hope will be the first annual, perhaps, symposium on electronic records management for the campus. I think uh, the response today, your attendance and the response to the survey results that are in your packet show that there's an intense interest and a lot of work being done out there, a lot of work being done in parallel, and I think we see opportunities, and we will by the end of the day and the course of the day, opportunities for sharing more of that information and that labor so that we can build on each other's success and come up with software solutions and even records management tools that will benefit the campus now and into the future. I just want to uh, acknowledge a few things before we get going and then introduce our two uh, co-sponsors who will offer us a uh, greeting. The planning committee today was composed of Josh Schneider, people from the archives, Josh Schneider, uh, processing archivist, Kathy Neal, associate university archivist, and David DiLorenzo, uh, the associate director of the Bancroft Library for Technical Services, and myself. And I must say, I want to give the nod to Josh, who as chair of the committee really haunched the whole thing and got us in place on time and got us all here today with, I think, a good program for you. Also very important to our efforts were Shell Wagner, the Chief Information Officer, Patrick McGrath, Associate Director of IS&T, and um, Cindy Major in the Chancellor's uh, Communications and Resource Center in, in, in uh, Cal Hall. And I want to thank our co-sponsors, Bancroft Library, the Chancellor's Office, and IS&T for the tremendous support they've given us, not just moral encouragement and support, but actually dollars on the line, paying for the program so that we can provide a free lunch for once and, uh, and have, I think, a good program. And also let me acknowledge Magnus Museum, the ninth uh, and quite distinguished program of the Bancroft Library. They became part of the Bancroft Library within the last year or so, and this is their new facility, and we're really pleased to have them uh, host us here this morning. Thank you very much. With that, I would like to bring to the podium, welcome to the podium, um, Elaine Tennant, who is the director of the Bancroft Library, who will greet us, and then followed by a greeting from the Chancellor's Office from Beata uh, Fitzpatrick, the Associate Chancellor and Chief of Staff there. Elaine? Good morning. Uh, David has basically taken most of Beata's script and mine also. So uh, let me welcome you warmly and to say how pleased I am uh, that Bancroft is a part of this joint undertaking with is and in the Chancellor's Office uh, to think about electronic records management. I was um, reviewing in my own mind this morning my first experience with attempting records management and it was uh, more years ago than I like to admit. Uh, I was a squirt uh, working as a summer intern in the Department of Housing and Urban Development in Washington. And I was tapped on the shoulder one morning and said, uh, and told, uh, go in there and pick out some stuff for the Johnson Library. And uh, I said, what do you mean? And they said, those file cabinets, look around, See what you think might be interesting, Xerox it, and pile it up there. We have a request to send things for the Johnson Library. And even then, I shuddered and thought, boy, this is damned unsystematic. What about all the stuff I'm not picking? And um, I have come to think about that time uh, more than once in the last uh, six or seven months uh, since I've been in Bancroft, because I realize what an enormous responsibility for the legal and historic record sits on the shoulders of all of you. And I'm uh, so pleased that all of you have taken the opportunity to come and share with each other what you know about the enormous challenge that if, is ahead of all of us. Uh, one of the new horrors that I have uh, thought about recently in my new job at Bancroft is the problem of the paperless office in the hands of a record manager who has no mandate. Um, I was talking about a week or so ago with um, the manager of, or the former manager of one of the agencies for which we are the official historical repository. And that gentleman was the last leader of that agency to have conducted a paper office. And he said, oh yes, my successors now have an entirely paperless office. 
And I said, how does that work? How do we get this stuff now from your agency? He says, well, it sort of depends on the interface between the agency librarian and you. And I said, and? And that's your subject for today. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm really so pleased that all of you have gotten together to uh, work on this. Uh, my own naive impression looking at the uh, agenda for today is that you've been presented with something that's like an oversized bouillon cube. It is so dense that I suspect that we will need to have more of these symposia probably at more frequent intervals so that after all of the information and theory that you present to each other today, you'll actually have time at another occasion to unpack it and work on it in terms of uh, procedures for implementation. But in any event, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm very grateful to all of you for coming, and I am humbled by the responsibility that you have for our record. So good morning and have a great day. <laughs>So good morning, I'm uh, Beata Fitzpatrick and I brought some talking points with me because part of my job is writing talking points for the Chancellor. So I do this every single day and I thought, well, I deserve some talking points for myself too. So anyway, uh, let me begin by just uh, thanking David and Elaine. Uh, and just again, repeating how exciting it is to see so many people here this morning for the Electronic Records Management Symposium. And certainly the Magnus uh, Museum and its rich collection of Jewish art and life, which is now part of the Bancroft, as David said, is just symbolically a perfect setting for a conference on the importance of managing and preserving records. Uh, we have a living example here of how important this is. Um, also, looking at the list of Berkeley participants, because you know, I'm uh, <clears throat> when I prepare for the chancellor, I always make sure, and I'm sure many of you have emails from me saying, send the, the chancellor the list of participants. So when I looked at the list, uh, again, just tremendously impressed to see that so many of you come from many different areas from all across the campus. So very clearly, the management of electro electronic to uh, records is a topic that's very timely um, and in one in which there's intense interest. And as Elaine has said, there's no easy answer yet. Um, David and his colleagues have put together a really substantive agenda that aims to be both useful and practical currently, as well as thought-provoking and future-looking. Uh, certainly uh, looking at some of the broader issues that underlie electronic records management. So uh, certainly I'd like to congratulate all of you who've worked on today's uh, program. So congratulations to the team. Uh, it's important that we share experiences and examine how uni the university envisages the preparation, retention, and archiving of records in a digital world with systems that meet policy and legal requirements, as well as the highest professional archival standards of accessibility and preservation. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I was trained as a medieval scholar, and my field was text editing. So there's nothing that I value more than records, right? There's nothing more thrilling than holding a 12th century manuscript in your hands. And I love copies. I wouldn't have had an academic career without them. Uh, for some medieval manuscripts, we're fortunate to have more than one copy. So what I do is I seek out and analyze copies um, or versions of the same text to see how the text changes with time and with the location in which the era in which it was copied, the location which it, in which it was copied. And so then this sort of 
painstaking analysis then can tell me a great deal about the evolution of language and how dialect changes, how language evolves. And also, it's even fun because when medieval scribes got bored, they would scribble comments in the margins. So you can imagine if any of you have been to some of the medieval sites in Europe and you see the scriptorium, which is a big room in which scribes sat all day long copying, copying, copying. So, you know, they would sometimes scribble notes to each other or comment on the text irreverently uh, in the margin. And these marginalia are precious records today. However, I wouldn't recommend the electronic equivalent of making rude comments on email. <laughs> that can get us into lots of trouble. So you'll be hearing more about creating and preserving records for some of my colleagues, including uh, Linda Williams, Associate Chancellor Linda Williams, uh, who is responsible for audit and advisory services and ethics and compliance, including PRA requests. So you'll be hearing from Linda and some of the staff from her units later this morning. In my current position in the Chancellor's Office, as I mentioned, I research and prepare many of the Chancellor's talking points. And just recently, the Chancellor was introducing this year's Clark Kerr Lecturer, who's Professor Emeritus Neil Smelser. And so in doing background research, I came across the fact that Professor Smeltzer had attended a 90th birthday celebration for Clark Kerr that was held at University House in 2001. And I thought, oh, this would be good for the chance to put into the chancellor's talking points because it's real to him. He lives in University House. So when he talks about Neil and the Clark Kerr lecture, he could kind of bring this alive. So I was able to go to the Bancroft Library where they brought me a folder that someone had thoughtfully put together. Uh, it had in it the printed invitation, the handwritten guest list and program, the typed speeches, and even the guest book with all the personal comments that those in attended had written for Clark Kerr. So I thought about this. I thought, well, oh, this was just wonderful, sitting there in the Bancroft with this with these documents and really, you know, Clark Kerr's so much talked about now with the master plan that it just brought it alive. So I thought to myself, if this were today, the invitation could just as easily have been an evite prepared by the Chancellor's office. The program and guest list would be held electronically by university relations event staff. The invited speakers would have their remarks on their own computers. And the guest book, well, that'd probably still be in hard copy at University House. So how would this wonderful record of Clark Kerr that I just experienced at the Bancroft Library be brought together and archived today? Whose responsibility would it be to decide to preserve this record for the future? So this is just giving you a concrete example in my life of what Elaine was talking about, our responsibility to preserve records. In the Chancellor's Office, we have the Chancellor's Records and Communications Resource Center, which was created actually by Clark Kerr in 1952. Uh, it tracks records electronically and has done so for quite a few years now. And we're currently using a system called Image Now, and you're going to hear more about this uh, later on the program from Cindy Major. Cindy, let's <laughs> your hand, uh, who manages our resource center. But as I said, the CCRC was created in another era with paper records and a good tracker system. The CCRC has always been able to follow documents easily. So documents came in by mail, snail mail, went to the CCRC first to be coded, were distributed for action, and eventually filed away and archived. But today, tracking, copying, and storing massage of, masses of paper is costly and inefficient. We need imaging systems. However, 
in the electronic era, we're becoming more reliant on people remembering to copy documents into ImageNow and even knowing what should be placed there. So again, let me give you an example. Just a couple of days ago, Linda and I were looking for a letter that had been sent by the Chancellor and the Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost, George Breslauer, to a state official. A copy of the message content was on our campus website, but we couldn't locate the letter. Eventually, it turned out that the letter had been transmitted in the text of an email from our office to the office in, in, um, in the government official's office. So it had gone from one EA's email to another EA's email for the transmittal without being copied into ImageNow. Eventually, we were able to prompt someone's memory and the document was located. So this highlighted for me that we need not only imaging systems, but clear guidelines and processes for creating and retaining records, uh, particularly administrative records, so they're not dependent upon the vagaries of individual decisions and circumstances. And as we all know, records must be maintained for a variety of reasons, historical, administrative, legal, risk management and compliance requirements, and others. In today's environment, the creation of records must also be carefully considered. Um, in some cases, we need to guard the privacy of records, for example, personnel, student, medical records. In other cases, we need to ensure public availability. So today, you're going to hear from people engaged in these issues from various units on our campus, at the Office of the President, and at sister institutions, including UC San Diego and the Lawrence Berkeley Lab. So I hope that one of the outcomes of today's symposium will be to encourage us to work toward cooperative solutions that bring together our many different divisions and units to develop best practices for electronics records management. Berkeley is a leader in so many things. I write that almost every day in the Chancellor's notes. And certainly, uh, we have the potential here for Berkeley to be the leader for the university system worldwide in the management of electronic records. We have fabulous resources here with all of you. So with that, let me wish you a very productive and stimulating day. Thank you.